Well, we had to set up the tape recorder in Somerset's apartment in order to uh, to make the recording where he met with uh, with this other uh, man, uh, Milter. In order to do so, uh, it was a very large tape recorder that was made especially for uh, intelligence work, weighing approximately 40 pounds. I carried it to the third floor of his apartment. Uh, placed it in a closet and then ran the microphone around the baseboard in the kitchen and the microphone was uh, hidden by, by the chairs where Miltier and uh, Somerset were to have their meeting. Whoa. 40 pound mic. 40 no, pound no, tape recorder. Oh, no wait. micro cassette back then. <laughs> had to lug, lug that giant thing up there and not be seen. Wow. I know. I'm just nearly, it's like they have to uh, out, outfit the whole house, put it in the closet, run the case. Oh, my God. You know, God forbid doing? someone looks in the closet for some reason. There's a giant tape recorder that weighs 40 pounds. Whereas nowadays we're like, well, yeah, I just have my cell phone and I got in a 4K footage of everything right. that happened here. Oh, my God. Well, back in the day, it was different. You know what I mean? They had to resort to different things. But Oh, yeah. Time, time seemed to have changed. But that wasn't oh. that long ago. I mean, that was 1963. I mean, Miami no. in color. Well, that that footage might have been a year or two later. But. Uh, true, true. And that footage, though, also would have had the giant TV cameras at the time. Uh, right. Sure. Right. But craziness. Okay, so who are we talking about now? Okay, so what he's talking about is is Somerset, William Somerset, who was a police undercover informant, uh, not wearing well he's wearing a wire in a way because it's going into that tape recorder and he's wiretapping joseph miltier um who is a i want to say a clansman he was a um white council guy from uh, um georgia from southern georgia um a, not a fan of the Kennedys. Let me just put it that way miltier miltier had uh was an extreme right wing uh fanatic who wanted to uh, have Kennedy eliminated and blame it on the communists. Um, so he's not alone. But this is the reason this is important is it's November 18th of 1963. It's like four. It, actually, it's the 9th. November 9th is the wiretap of 1963. So it's it's a few days before he goes to Dallas. And, you know, just to set the stage, um, Kennedy has to go to Florida. And you say, well, why does he have to go to Florida? The answer, Eric, is because some things never changed. He lost the state of Florida to Richard Nixon in 1960 by 47,000 votes. And oh. Why, oh, yeah. And that's why he's in the state of Florida. And he's in the state of Florida to go to Miami and to go to Tampa. And Tampa has got um, it's kind of a blue thing going on in Tampa. Miami's kind of up in the air. Uh, Tampa has a lot of Cubans, mo not just first generation Cubans, but second and third and fourth generation Cubans in West Tampa, as I recall. So his trip is to go to Tampa, meet at this stadium of, and, and give out an award, the, the, the flag of Cuba to a bunch of expatriates. And keep in mind, he's coming back from the debacle of the Cuban Missile Crisis. So I'm from the, the Bay of Pigs and he's got Cubans to the left and Cubans to the right of him politically. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And we'll get into Tampa in a second because what Miltier, this is like a two part episode. And I don't mean that two parts. I mean, it's half about Miltier and the Florida, the Florida breakdown is Miami, which is Miltier. And the other half is about a guy named Lopez who was in Tampa. So it's uh, Gilberto <clears throat> Policarpo Lopez, which most people have never heard of. We're going to do the second half of the show about him. First half is going to be about Joseph Miltier, the, the right wing guy. Um, uh, Lopez is from the left of, of Kennedy. So <laughs> he's got plots to the right of him and plots to the left of him. And plots is the Yiddish word of the day. Just P -L -O -T -Z. <laughs> so take it. Uh, and I don't mean plots as P-L-O-T-S. Uh, to plots, 
is to sit down. So we're going to use. Oh, that, okay. Get that out of the way really quick. I, I thought plots I was hold to, on to plots. You know, I thought plots was to perish. I didn't know. No, that's that's a different plots. This is PLOTZ. However, okay. getting back to Miami, um, there are so many different um, assassination things going on that they put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Air Force men, uh, uh, military men, the different police forces from around Florida, complete opposite of Dallas, completely the opposite of Dallas. And the motorcade that is going to happen in Miami is changed to a helicopter uh, version of the motorcade. This is McDill, McDill Air Force Base in Tampa. This is where he first goes. And at that Air Force Base, um, he comes down from Palm Beach. Keep in mind, Eric, he's in Florida. He's at that Kennedy mansion uh, in Palm Beach. Um, so he fly, he helicopters down to McDill. Now, McDill has, oddly enough, is on some sort of red alert with they have borrowed jets from the Navy and other branches of service because in his speech, Kennedy is encouraging a coup in Cuba. And in fact, the newspapers the next day say Kennedy encourages coup in Cuba, all the different newspapers. And he's saying once Cuba is liberated, we will open up trade. We, once Cuba is blah, 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 all the headlines use the word coup. He doesn't actually say the word coup. Right. But is the rope line at uh, MacDill Air Force Base on the side when he goes over? There's about five or ten thousand people there, so he goes over and does his thing over there. But it's plots aplenty going on in Florida because there are. It's, it's kind of like uh, when you get into the Tampa thing. It's kind of re reminiscent of the Chicago plot, if you remember, Eric, with Thomas Arthur Valley. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's what we're going to get into now. If we have if we do have the audio, Eric and I are going to read the transcript either way of the Miltier Somerset conversation. But let me just set up Somerset. Somerset is kind of um, a left wing union guy and he's an informant. He actually has a little tiny newspaper uh, that's a union newspaper for I forget what union it was, a machinist or hotel. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Was that a dog or? No, that was the audio. I, I was just. Oh, no, no. Okay. So, so Somerset, I don't know why Somerset is a police informant. I, I don't think he's guilty of anything other than being an informant. I don't know. Like, in other words, he's not a criminal. Maybe he's a snitch. I mean, he's just a snitch. Yeah, I, that's what I'm trying to get at. He, he's not a criminal that they are using to inform. He seems to be a snitch from the left. Right, if he's like, I hate the, this right winger, and he's like, oh, I know this stupid right winger, and da 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 da, maybe something. I like think that. you might be right. I think you might be right, because Somerset uh, will later keep informing on Miltier, even after the events that are going to transpire on November twenty second, in nineteen sixty three. So, I don't know how you want to do this. If you want to play a little audio first, yeah, we'll play a snippet of it, and then we can go into just to, okay. Just, it, so, it, just so you know, Miltier is friends with a person named Guy Bannister of New Orleans, the ex-FBI Chicago uh, 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 department head of Chicago's uh, FBI branch. Guy Bannister runs the right-wing anti-Cuban operations out of New Orleans and is somehow linked to um, uh, Miltier, oddly enough. And Miltier will later be linked um, by certain investigators to the assassination of Martin Luther King. Oddly enough, which is not the purview of today's show, but Miltier. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, just on a little background on Miltier. Um, he comes from Quitman, Quitman. If there is a place called Quitman, Georgia, in southern Georgia, maybe our Georgia friends down there. Um, spelled Q-U-I-T, Quitman, Georgia. Uh, anyway, so he inherits money um, late in life before this happens. From his father to the tune of $1 million, Miltier. I don't know if you knew that, but Miltier becomes a millionaire overnight with this inheritance from his dad and may have been involved, or people believe involved, in funding various assassination attempts or plots or, or, or whatever, uh, paying for different things and possibly even the escape of, of James Earl Ray out of the United States. That's how deep 
uh, Miltier goes. Um, and this, keep in mind, this is 1968. This is five years before this. We're in 63 here in this story with, with Miltier. However, uh, Miltier is on the White Citizens Council. He is friends with J.B. Stoner, I believe, who blew up the girls in the church in Birmingham, Alabama. I believe that's the same guy. They're associated together. Uh, he's uh, not even a Klansman. He's beyond Klansman whatever the next level is, you know, I mean, <laughs> oh, so like, what, 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 is he like Mel Gibson's father to Catholics? Maybe. I don't know. He, you know they, they used to have those white <laughs> citizen councils down there uh, that were kind of mainstream until, you know, the 67, 68, they started yeah. to fall out of vogue as did the Klan, you know, because they were infiltrated by the FBI. And um, I guess the FBI would dress as Klansmen back then and, you know, try to infiltrate the, uh, the the clan in the south to bust them open but good uh, thing they don't do that anymore yeah no i know i was, I was bringing it up I, there yeah, was a, I, couple, I, I, a couple of them arrested for attempting to blow up the grid yesterday i don't know if you saw that story and they said they it, it, there's 22 grids being blown up by earth first guys left-wing guys so they found the only two white supremacist couple that was plotting to blow up a grid you know so i just i thought that was a, kind of interesting you know and then they said it was rampant. It was rampant, <laughs> but it was rampant from the Earth first climate of course, change. It, of course, but the, it, it's kind of like um, the incident that happened recently with the cops when it was like, wait, 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 wait. Oh, we got to get... They were concerned about diversity, so they made sure diversity flowed the other way before the pictures got taken. Or or there was an incident with the assault um, with the boys that were fighting, but somehow they found a stock photo of... Uh, of, of shall we say a different race child hitting oh, okay. another child yeah. and then put yeah. that on the article it's like nothing to see here <laughs> well they mentioned the unabomber in the article and i thought to myself this couple does not really worship the unabomber you know and his manifesto this is not their thing no um, but yet they were trying to link him to the unabomber nice try nice try but um the unabomber's got his own fans and they happen to be on the far left so uh, yep. Kaczynski's manifesto is their Bible of to, to climate change in a lot of ways. But I digress. I digress. <laughs> we, we are we going to play a little audio of the Somerset sure. Miltier? It, it, I don't know if you're going to blast it or what you're going to do here. I turned the volume down a little. Okay, hopefully. all right, that was a little loud. Okay, just coming here. Dang it, still loud. Okay, let me go down. Hold on. They're going eighteen or something like that to make some kind of speech. I think it's eighteen. Well, we had to. And then that okay, well, there's a little thing. snippet of the dialogue. I mean, Eric and I are going to read from the transcript in a little while, but what else do you have there? Uh, well, why the hell are you thinking the best way would be? Good? Uh, I'm going to well, I guess that's enough. <laughs> it gets the point. <laughs> it gets to the point because there's a photo I wanted to show you of this Floridian hotel, uh, which looks exactly like this, the, the Texas School Book Depository. Unfortunately, it's got 99 windows facing the parade route in Tampa. And the parade route, oddly enough, has a complete 90 degree hairpin turn just like in front of the Texas School Book Depository. And every single window in the hotel, which is the highest building in Tampa, uh, the Floridian, has a window that opens. And they had on their radar a mobile sniper, a sniper who was moved. This is by from police reports out of Tampa a sniper who was on the move with a high-powered rifle and a scope within the Floridian Hotel. And it's a huge building with, as described by Miltier almost to the letter, but Miltier is also describing indirectly the Texas School Book Depository as a building that, you know, it's six stories tall. The Floridian is even taller than that. Wow. <laughs> That's insane. He talks about assembling the rifle in the building. He talks about picking up, and we'll get into this in the transcript in a second. He talks about picking up a patsy immediately afterwards who won't know anything about it. Um, 
to show to the American people. Now, keep in mind, this is November 9th of 1963. And this guy is being wiretapped. The wiretap by the FBI is given to an obscure group called the Secret Service. And nobody tells Dallas Secret Service about any of this crap, right? The FBI, the, the, the Miami police do their job. They wiretap this guy. They go, holy crap, look at this. And they pass it along to the, the powers that be. Powers that be said, thank you very much. We we, we already know about this, boys. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for reminding us. Hey, hey, guys, uh, go ahead and throw it back with the Dinkin file. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway, let me see if we can find this transcript, me and you. Yep, definitely. And I don't know this, if uh, this shot too. I oh, thought what is this good. shot here? What is this? This part? is showing the crowd in in Tampa and how many people there were. Oh yeah, yeah. T that's at the stadium. The Tampa stadium um, was crazy. That was a baseball park, uh, minor league baseball park, I think. And yeah, it was a madhouse. It was a total madhouse. That's yeah. There's some Secret Service there. Um, Gerald Blaine was with him. Greer was a driver, by the way, the same driver who will drive him to his death. Um, a couple of weeks later. Um, yeah, so he is uh, giving a speech there. And the Fair Play for Cuba uh, kind of denounced the speech. They took out a full page ad in the Tampa Bay paper denouncing Kennedy from the Fair Play for Cuba committee, uh, who had a member who had a member named Lee Harvey Oswald. But the original uh, president of the Tampa the Tampa Fair Play for Cuba Committee was a cat named V.T. Lee. Now, V.T. Lee moves to New York and becomes the head of the Fair Play for Cuba committees across the country. But V.T. Lee was the original head of the Fair Play for Cuba Committee of Tampa, of Tampa. And the reason he's important is that's the guy that Lee Harvey Oswald writes to to become a what's it called when you form a chapter, a, ch a, ch a charter or a mm. chapter of uh, the Fair Play for C Cuba Committee in New Orleans. He writes to V.T. Lee in New York, and V.T. Lee used to live in Tampa, where he was one of the original founders of the Fair Play for Cuba Committee. Now, the Fair Play for Cuba Committee is a far left pro-Castro organization. That's why I mentioned it, just so people get the spectrum correct here of what we're dealing with, because we're dealing with two plots one on the far left, one on the far right. Wow, perfect. <laughs> okay, script wise, I got a couple scripts. I got the Mary Farrell script. I've got the. Well, they're both uh, the same. They're both the same. Use the Mary Farrell script. Do we want to start somewhere in the middle? The well, middle? you could be Somerset. Um, yeah, just start where it says, you know, where it says Somerset at the top. Uh, now we are going to. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll just take it down for a while and see to get people get a flavor of this. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to, you're going to have to take Kenny. What do you call his last name? Uh, Kenneth Adams. Yeah. You're going to have to take him in. He's supposed to be one of the hardcore, the underground, and you're going to have to invite him into that too. What about Brown? Now, are you going to invite Brown in? You're going to have Brown in it. Oh, okay. So why don't we jump? I see what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, no. This is a pre-plot uh, description here. Uh, turn the page on that, Eric, and you'll see uh, the top of the page um, because he's talking about church bombings at this point, which is what I think they wanted to get Miltier on was the church bombings. So if we go down a little further, can skip Kenneth Adams, turn to page three. I don't have page numbers. It's all one long page. Okay, well, so, um, uh, just give me some words and I'll find them. I'll give you some words, Miltier. Well, there is a way to beat that. Um, hold on. Let me, let me find a place here. Okay. Um, Somerset, I'll read your part. I don't know. I think Kennedy is coming here on the 18th, which is what we were playing a little bit, um, or something like that. It's from the audio we were just playing. Okay. It's, yeah, it's, you can it's, find that. It's bolded. Got yeah, it. it's bold. Yeah, it's bold. Okay. I'll go to the bold then. Perfect. Right, right. All right. This is a highly professional operation, folks. Thank <laughs> you very much. I hope you enjoy the show and uh, feel free to tip your waiter on your way out. No. Um, I don't know. I think Kennedy's coming here on the 18th or something like that to make some kind of speech. I don't know what it is, but I imagine it'll be on the TV and you can be on the look for it. I think it's on the 18th. He's supposed to be here. I don't know what it is supposed to be about. You could bet your bottom dollar. He's going to have a lot to say about the Cubans. There are so many of them here. 
yeah, well, he'll have a thousand bodyguards, so don't worry about that. Uh, the more bodyguards he has, the easier it is to get them. What? Yeah, the more bodyguards he has, the more easier it is to get them. Well, how in the hell do you figure would be the best way to get them? From an office building with a high-powered rifle, how many people um, does he have going around who look just like him? Do you do you know about that? No, I never heard that he had Well, he's got them. Yes. He has about 15. Where, whenever he goes any place... They he knows he is not a masked man, a marked man. He knows he's a marked man. You think he knows he's a marked man? Oh, sure, he does. They're really going to try to kill him. Oh, yeah, it's in the working. Brown himself, Brown is just as likely to get him as anybody. He hasn't said so, but he tried to get Martin Luther King. He did. Oh, yes, he followed him for miles and miles, couldn't get close enough to him. You know exactly where he is in Atlanta, don't you? Martin Luther King, oh, yeah. Buster Street. Yep, yep, 5.30. Oh, Brown tried to get him, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, he will damn sure do it, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, that is why, look, you see, well, that's why we have to be so careful. You know that Brown is operating strong. Right, now jump down to the bold uh, below that. You see where it picks up? There's yep. a little, yeah, go there. That is right. They are individual operators. We don't want that within the party. Hitting this Kennedy is going to be a hard proposition, I tell you. I believe you may have figured out a way to get him. You may have figured out the office building and all that. I don't know how the Secret Service agents cover all them office buildings or anywhere he's going. Do you know whether they do that or not? Well, well, if they have any suspicion, they do that, of course. But without suspicion, chances are they won't. Uh, you take there in Washington, of course, it is the wrong time of year. But you take pleasant weather. He comes out on the veranda, and somebody could be in a hotel room across the way there and pick him off just like that. Is that right? Sure. Dissemble a gun. You don't have to take a gun up there. You could take it up in pieces. All those guns come knocked down, and you could take them apart. And, and then it jumps down a little further. Miltier says, there ain't any countdown. This is interesting. He goes, because they ask him about the timing. Miltier says, there ain't any countdown to it. We have just got to be sitting on go. Countdown, they can move in on you, and you and on go, they can't. Countdown is all right for a slow, prepared operation, but in an emergency operation, you have to be sitting on go. Boy, if that Kennedy gets shot, we've got to know where we're at, because you know there'll be a real shake if they do that. They wouldn't leave any stone unturned there, no way. They will pick up somebody within hours afterwards. If anything like that would happen, just to throw the public off. Oh, somebody's going to have to go to jail if he gets killed. Miltier, just like that Bruno Hauptman in the Lindbergh case, you know. <laughs> that's why I wanted to end there because of wow. the Hauptman thing. Yeah, that's kind of amazing <laughs> that he end, mentions Bruno Hauptman, Eric, in the Lindbergh yeah, yeah. case, an episode that you and I did, which we could recommend. Absolutely, uh, on the channel, the Lindbergh episode. I don't remember. Maybe Halpin was, was a patsy. Maybe they picked him up as a patsy. I, there are some who say that. Uh, I know, uh, I know. John I know. Douglas, uh, the FBI profiler, I think suspects that he may not have. There's a lot of people guilty. who believe Halpin might have been a patsy. You know what I mean? Or framed, at least. Or framed. But keep in mind, people, well, this is November 9th. I mean, look at the look what's going on in this tape recording. Um, this this is a picture of Miltier on the right. Is that Somerset on the left? Yes. Yeah, that's William Somerset on the left and Miltier on the right. So Miltier tells him this and Somerset and the M uh, Miami police contact the Secret Service uh, who are going to show up in Miami. And they do show up on the 18th in force with a lot of bodies all around and they still cancel the they still cancel the motorcade the short motorcade in miami and put them in a helicopter the one in tampa though is a long ass motorcade that goes on for eight miles with a lot of winding turns which ends up um being beneath the floridian hotel with a with an extreme left hand turn and uh this is a picture of kennedy in the limo yep yep I don't know if th this is Tampa. I don't know if this is part of the motorcade or. I think uh, that, that's at the stadium where he pulls into the stadium. Okay. To give the speech.
But the reality of it is the, the Floridian, if you have a picture of that hotel, it looks surprisingly red brick stone. It looks just like the Texas School Book Depository building, only twice the, the, the height, twice the height. So what's interesting is that Miltier may or may not have turned up in Dallas in this Algen's photo that you have a picture of. The photo of Miltier has been debated since then whether this is Miltier or not, right below the Texas School Book Depository, Eric. Okay, to clarify, I ran software on this AI software to try to enhance it. So it is not, you know, the original. It's an attempt to enhance it a little bit better. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, people believe that this is Joseph Miltier uh, right in front of the Texas School Book Depository. A lot of different critics have tried to uh, say that's not. I've always believed it was. Um, there are certain looks and different uh, hairlines and things of that nature. He, If you could show the picture of the two side by side, um, you may give the audience a better take on whether that's Miltier or not. Yeah, again, this is a blow up AI, so it's a little right, wonky right. looking because, I mean, it's so those small. Are the, those are the two. That's Miltier in Florida, and that's Miltier on the right, if that is Miltier, in front of the Texas Cool Book Depository. And he's obviously not a shooter. He's obviously there for facilitation reasons if he is there. Now, he the, the next day, he calls up Somerset on the phone and says, I told you so. And Somerset is shocked that Miltier calls him up and says, it went just like I thought it would. And Somerset said, oh, my God. And he goes off to, I think, southern Georgia to his hometown after that. Uh, Miltier, but you know the, what? Look at the left mark. That almost is, looks like it is a toupee. I know. I always thought it was a toupee. So the, kind of, the hairline arguments that are coming up, that I, would right. make I never sense. thought the hairline arguments held water because that thing on the left is some nutty to toupee bouffant thing he's got going on. It's and a, I think he once he inherited a million dollars, he probably got his hair uh like some sort of a hairpiece you know once he inherited that money he may have gone to you know some top-notch hair people because he's wearing these weird hats too all the time yeah which you know a lot of people who've lost hair wear, wear no but i'm saying where's the bouffant in that hat yeah yeah where's the hair in that hat that doesn't look like that hat can handle that amount of hair yeah there's not much room in that hat right that's all i'm saying and, and there's he wears a bunch of different hats and then he's got, you know, that in some photos, late photos, he's got that bouffant going on. So the, the, the critics of the um, conspiracy um, research community have said that the hairline doesn't match. But I, to me, I think it's the same guy. Yeah, I, I think, I think it's guy. possible. It's Yeah, it's definitely possible. And then, I mean, look, he calls up. Somerset the next day and says, I told you so. And Somerset contacts the, the Miami police again and, and tells him, yeah. And to hold some weight to it, this is um, an evidence photo from the House Committee of Select or Select Committee on the Assassination, right? Right. They dove pretty deeply into this. They they looked pretty closely at Multier. They um there were they were Wow. Did we just lose your internet? What's that? Uh, you froze completely there for a second. I did? Yeah. Hopefully it uh, worked for everybody else, but you froze completely on my end. Very rare. Um, anyway, so Miltier will later get involved in, uh, at least peripherally, from according to sources in the Martin Luther King assassination. And we see early on in 1963 in this transcript, Eric, He's talking about stalking MLK, right? This is five years before they kill him. Yeah. Five years before they kill him, they're already stalking him. So the, the idea that Multier is, uh, uh, is too innocent to be involved in the JFK thing is, um, doesn't hold water. He's clearly involved in something here. Because, I mean, how many people are wiretap saying this kind of stuff? You know what I mean? Like, they, they had their suspicions and, you know, Miami was a hotbed of both left and right 
Cuban pro and anti-Cuban stuff. Kind of like but New Orleans? <laughs> like New Orleans, but, you know, the which gets us into this other Cuban that I mentioned earlier named Gilberto Policarpo Lopez. I don't know if you have a picture of him because this guy was the Thomas Arthur Valley of Tampa. Here he is. There is a lot of similarity between him, uh, Thomas Arthur Valley, and Lee Harvey Oswald. Some people believe that <clears throat> this was the patsy that was being set up if the Tampa plot, not the, not the Miami plot, if the Tampa plot had succeeded, that this was the guy uh, who would be taken into custody. Now, this is a pro-Castro uh, Cuban who came from Havana, went to Key West, got married, and somehow ends up in Tampa. He is the same exact age as Lee Harvey Oswald. And, 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 and a, one of the researchers put together 18 points of similarities between these two guys. And I, I just want to read some of the similarities uh, between Lopez and Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, both were white males, 23 years old during most of 1963. Both had returned to America in the summer of 62 from a communist country. Both spent part of 1963 in a southern city that was headquarters uh, for one of the two mob bosses. During 63, each was frustrated by the lack of go government. Each was frustrated by the lack of government document, which could hamper his employment and the prospects for his future. Uh, both are said by various sources to have been assets or informants for a U.S. agency, and both were of interest to naval intelligence who kept files on both of them, Eric. Uh, Mid-1963, both men and their wives moved to another city, and then both men became involved in the Fair Play for Cuba Committee. Uh, this is, it goes on. In the summer of 63, some of their associates saw them as being pro-Castro, while others saw them as being anti-Castro. Both were living in a city where there was much anti-Castro activity. In the summer of 63, both were involved in fistfights over pro-Castro statements they made. Uh, though both appeared at times to be pro-Castro, neither joined the Communist Party and neither regularly associated with local Communist Party members. In the summer of 63, their backgrounds would have made them both uh, of them, a good, deniable, low-level intelligence operative. Uh, September 63, both men were living apart from their wives as the result of marital difficulties, Eric. In the fall of 63, both men crossed the border at Nuevo Laredo and made a mysterious trip to Mexico City, Eric, which I, I dispute that Oswald did, but an Oswald double did. Okay, and they were under photographic surveillance by the CIA, both were trying to get to Cuba. Both went by car, uh, one leg of the Mexico City trip. Neither was a very good driver. Neither <laughs> man owned a car. In the fall of 63, each had a job in the vicinity of JFK's route for one of his November motorcades. A trusted FBI informant and Tampa police informant placed both men in Tampa in the fall of 63. The week of November 22nd, 1963, both men were in a Texas city where the assassination was in the works for JFK. Following the events in Dallas, both men were investigated. Declassified documents indicated that both men were the subject of unusual U.S. intelligence activity. And finally, for years after the assassination, government agencies try to keep much of the material about both these men classified. So there's many, many similarities between Lopez and Lee Harvey Oswald. But I'll get into even some more. Lopez, after the assassination, gets down to Mexico, gets to Mexico City, stays at the top hotel in Mexico City, gets a visa out of Mexico City and flies on an airplane, a commercial airplane, as the only passenger to Havana two days after the assassination, almost like an escape trip, and ends up in Havana, Cuba, where he started from to begin with, and lived in Havana and, and was celebrated there. Now, you tell me what Lopez was up to. I, I'm, 
I'm flabbergasted by it, but it seems almost like a checklist of, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Or, uh, or like a recruitment list. You know, it's yes. like, uh, hey, we need somebody who fills it. Uh, does anybody done it with Valley too? Because it'd be interesting if there was like Valley doesn't have. Oh no, I have done it with Valley. Valley has a lot of similar yeah. things. Marines, uh, yeah, a bunch of different things. Not as much as Lopez though. Uh, Valley is very similar to Oswald. Uh, was in the South Pacific, was in Japan. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff about Valley. Um, but here, just to give you the timeline, November 17th, um, before showing that there was, uh, they were showing slides at a woman's house, Lopez having been um, in the residence. November 20th, Gilberto Lopez obtains a me Mexican tourist card, good for 15 days in Tampa, Florida. According to the FBI, dated March 31st, 64, copy of the Mexican tourist card. This is after the fact. This All of this is turned over to the Warren Commission and they bury every single aspect of Lopez. And part of the reason is they do not want Cuba to be linked to the assassination. But clearly Lopez was up to something and was a Cuban citizen who, who got a U.S. Uh, visa to come from Havana to Key West with and married a woman down there. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Lopez was up to something. <laughs> that is freakish. That is very freakish, my friend. And if you look at him, he kind of looks like a Oswald clone, um, albeit a Latino Oswald. You know what I mean? But yeah. very similar in build and look and stature between the two of them. I don't know if there's a photo of the two of them side by side. but Yeah, I don't have it pulled. I, I saw one, but I didn't um, pull right, it. Right, right. The um, yeah, just to give you the timeline on this thing out of Tampa, uh, this is from the military. This is Tampa Bay, um, airborne for Tampa, uh, 11 10 a.m. This is um, November 18th. Arrive at McDill Air Force Base, receive brief military honors uh, for two minutes, and then they held a secret briefing with JFK at 11 55 a.m. with the Army and the Air Force. Um, and, and that was strike headquarters, what was called strike force. And that lasted about 15 or 20 minutes. And, and a lot of people believe that this was a yet another invasion plan of a coup d'etat of, uh, Cuba, that they were going to strike from this base, uh, McDill. I don't know what happened to McDill base, whether it's still down there, probably the military people who watch the show probably will tell us. What happened to this base? I never heard of it. But oddly enough, he d departs the officers club to go to the heliport. And at 1.30 arrives at a baseball field uh, to give that speech. Oh, yeah. Here's the two of them together. Yeah. He arrives at the baseball field. What's the name of the baseball field, Eric? Lopez Baseball Field. <laughs> it's Lopez Baseball Field, which is pretty funny. Um the motorcade through Tampa is 7.5 miles. It departs at 155 from Lopez uh, and lasts for 45 minutes, Eric. Hmm. Right? That's a and long then time. And it arrives at Fort Homer Hesterly Armory, where this program begins. The Armory um, International Inn, where he addresses 600 union members. Uh, that's at 3.40 p.m., 3.55 p.m. Uh, he then drives another 9.1 miles, 25-minute escort, uh, departs Mac McDill Air Force Base for a trip to Miami. That's the 40-minute trip. He lands at 5 o'clock at Concourse Number 1, Miami International Airport, where there was supposed to be a motorcade from the airport. That is canceled. So he now departs. At 5.35 p.m. from uh, Concourse Number 1, Miami International Airport, um, via helicopter. Uh, McDill is still active. It's the home of the F-16. Right. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, there was a ton of jets there. I don't know if you have a shot of the of the, the base, but they had brought in jets from multiple services for, for reasons that were not explained. Uh, they borrowed them from, uh, from the Navy and other branches of the military just to be there as a strike force if Kennedy ordered a strike force of Havana. From what I've read and researched last night, I was up pretty late last night um, digging into some of this. 
He goes to the Americana Hotel in Miami Beach at 5.50 p.m. That's via helicopter. And then has a cocktail party. Inter-American press, American dinner begins. The president addresses the dinner guests at 8 p.m. 8.30, he departs the Americana Hotel by helicopter. Again, no motorcade, no motorcade. And this is because of the multiple threats. Um, he then goes to Airborne from Miami to Washington, D.C. He does not go back to Palm Beach. He then helicopters from Andrew Air Force Base at, at 10.50 p.m. Uh, via helicopter, 11 p.m., the south grounds of the White House. But, yeah, there's a, there's a picture of him here at Lopez Field. I don't know if you've seen that. That, that. Al Lopez Field. Now, I don't know if this is Al Lopez who used to play second base for the Yankees or not. It could be Al Lopez who used to play second base for the Yankees. I think he was a... I think he was a Cuban, Al Lopez. Um, I'd have to check on that. I'm just sticking my neck out on that one. Um, interesting. Al Lopez Field, November 18th, 1963. Uh, okay, so here he is speaking at Al Lopez Field. Look, dignitaries. Here's Kennedy uh, shaking hands with various dignitaries at Al Lopez Field. A lot of Cubans there. And he's trying to sew up this. Yeah, this is the motorcade car that's en route to Tampa. That is not the same limo that's the death mobile. No. I think the death mobile is going to be flown to Dallas. But let me just give you the numbers because the contrast between what happens in Dallas and what happens here is enormous. Uh, security for the presidential trip, the Tampa police alone, Tampa police, how big is Tampa police? They supply 200 of the department's approximately 270 uniform force. There's 270 on the force. They give you 200 of them. Law enforcement officers from the state, six counties, and the cities of St. Petersburg and Clearwater assisted. Not, this is not to mention 400 men, Eric, from federal law enforcement agencies such as the United States Air Force also saw duty during this presidential visit. Think about that. Again, in contrast to a number four days later, in contrast to four days later, um, it appeared to be no need to report the arrest. Uh, there were multiple arrests made, by the way. Yeah. Is this McDill? Yeah. Yeah. I can not find it. This is the only shot I found with good jets or whatever. Most are like aerial and you can't really see it. Mm -hmm. And because it's military, it's harder to find good pictures around anyway. Mm -hmm. Some reason. <laughs> Well, unless you've got a balloon. I mean, if you've got a balloon, you could get elevated up above and, and do stuff with the balloon. Maybe uh, about 60,000 feet up in the air might be a weather balloon. Works well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Old school, my friend. Old school. Sure, sure. Um, anyway, so th this goes on to talk about the Cuban exiles in Tampa, how they are not completely opposed to JFK, but they want him to keep his foot on the gas pedal on the war on communism. You know what I mean, Eric? They want him to, um, it says here, today the people of Tampa, United States visits, uh, the President of the United States visits the city of Tampa. We Cubans that have lost our liberty, crushed under the military boot of international communism, would like to take this opportunity to remind the people of the United States and its president that Cuba is fighting again for her independence and again with the indifference of all great nations uh, of the free world. And this is different than the treason ads that Kennedy is going to run into in Dallas is the reason I'm mentioning this, because they're really reminding him to not forget the Cuban people and uh, to keep the pressure on uh, uh, Cuba, Eric, you know, in, in, in an anti-communist way, because there's so many Cubans in Tampa and 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 they vote for Kennedy, unlike some people in Texas or in Dallas who, you know, had a, a different take on him. You know what I mean? Clearly, clearly did not like him at all. <laughs> right, right. But these two ads are in contrast also, you know, um, even the welcome to uh, uh, Dallas, Mr. President, goes on and lists all his treasonous activity. It was kind of sarcastic. The Bernard Weissman ad that Jack Ruby got so upset about that was linked to General Walker and to Lamar Hunt who provided the money for the ad 
uh, as we mentioned in one of the earlier episodes. Another rich white wing, right winger, right? Yeah, I mean, Lamar Hunt had a lot more money than um, Milch here. But Milch here, um, you know, to inherit a million dollars. Uh, was That's not... like 10 million now. No, 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 no. It was a million. I'm, I'm adjusting it for that time. Oh, OK. OK. I, I've already adjusted it. But Sorry. yeah, I mean, he 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 is not a piker. Let me put it that way, Miltier. He's able to fly around the country uh, and fan the flames of a lot of these different events. You know what I mean? A guy yeah. that no one's ever really looked at, and especially Lopez. I want to get into these minor characters because I believe they're not so minor, Eric. You know what I mean? Nobody's covered these guys, and that's why eventually we're going to lead up to some of the bigger characters in the storyline once we get these little guys uh, out of the way, you know what I mean? Uh, the mill tears and the guy banisters and, and, and people like Lopez, you know, which I, Lopez, I find fascinating because nobody's ever gone after Lopez. The pawns and patsies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't even know what Policarpo means as a middle name. I'm fascinated to learn in the chat. If Policarpo P O L I C A R P O is a name. I don't even know what that means. Policarpo. Yeah, I is that a Cuban uh, name or is that his his last name? You know, what I mean, like sometimes the mother and father with a hyphen, you know, both last names. I mean, uh, Gilberto Lopez. But uh, anyway, so so there were plots of plenty, plots of plenty in in Florida at this time. And Kennedy makes statements to his aides. Uh, literally saying that somebody could pick me off from a, from a high building today. He literally says that to Powers. Uh, he's well aware of these plots. They tell him about it. it. A day later, there's articles in the paper, in the Tampa paper, Miami paper, of people being arrested. You know, this is not a secret thing. Well, no, and then Miltier says, oh, he knows it. So oh, yeah, no, he does it. know it. He does know it, yeah. In fact, he says it to Jackie, and he says it also to uh, Powers and, and his aides that he's a marked hmm. man down there in Florida. But as I pointed out at the beginning of this episode, the, the reason he goes to Texas is because Texas is in play. And the reason he goes to Florida is because Florida is in play in terms sure. of the election. And with that slim Nixon victory of 46,000, uh, Florida is a conservative state at that point, uh, a red state. Let me just put it that way. And yeah. now it's gone full circle, I guess, back to being a red state. So. You know. I, I I just can't help but look at the um, that has to be a nightmare to guard for. I mean, you're just looking at it, it's like if you know you're in danger, oof, yeah, you're just putting your fate in the hands of God, so to speak. Well, you, you're talking you're, about it. first of all, they're all Cubans. Everyone there is a Cuban. You know whether they're you know yeah. one thing the articles described is the anti-Kennedy Cubans on both ends were fringe, like five percent. And that 85% of the middle Cubans were middle class and revered him. If that oh. Polycarp was a Christian martyr. He is fed to the lions in his old age. Okay. So <laughs> Polycarpo is a name? Or, or what is Polycarpo? I guess uh, maybe that's Spanish for it. Right. But that's a guy, that's a last name or a, a middle name? Uh, could be middle. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm Interesting. Fed to the lions. You know what I mean? That's bad. Yeah. That's bad. You know, Lenny Bruce once said um, the Christians had a much tougher struggle than African-Americans did. No. He said, I'd rather be refused service at a lunch counter than served as refuge, as refuse to the lions. And, <laughs> and he flipped it the, around. I'd rather be refused service than served as refuse. Mm. In, in reference to lion eating. of the Yeah, no. Yeah, he Probably. says that's a tougher struggle. A, a very interesting line by Lenny Bruce. Good play on words. Oh, brilliant play on words. Brilliant play on words. And then he said lion fressing, and fressing means to eat in Yiddish, which could be used in a later show. But he said lion fressing, that's a tough way to go. <laughs> being eaten by lions. He said that's harsh. But he said as opposed to being schlepped away from a lunch counter at Woolworths, and I, I mean, he's saying this in 1958. So holy cow! I mean, damn, that's pretty harsh. Wow. <laughs> well, oh, <clears throat> so this is our two characters. Yeah. What did we miss on it? 
on the two characters. Um, I think we got a lot of it here. Miltira's hairdo. I mean, I, I just want to give me that close up of Miltira's hairdo again. But the solo photo of Miltira with the big pompadour. Big pompadour. The, the one <laughs> single photo that with his glasses looking straight in the camera. I don't know if you have that one. I think it's um, thrown together. Oh, I've okay. got the, right. the, just the three pack. All right. Because I want to, I, I have one here. I'll show you mine. Take a look at this thing and tell me if this is normal. I'm going to show you a picture and you tell me, is this? Yes. I mean, what is that, ladies? <laughs> ladies, what is that at home? Wow. Please tell me that this is real or some sort of contraption there. That is insane. That is crazy, right? What I mean, I've never seen that on a normal person other than Harry Styles, uh, who was booed <laughs> for winning a Grammy the other night. So, yeah, but at least he didn't have horns on, right? Yeah, well, I didn't see that. What was there a Satanist uh, angle to the thing? Uh, yeah, yeah, apparently he, uh, where we're going, my friends, <laughs> we're going straight to Satan. But yeah, so one book, I don't know if I'd recommend it, but there's a book called Ultimate Sacrifice. Um, it's written by Lamar Waldron and Tom Hartman. It used to be on Air America. There's a lot of good... Yeah, there it is. That's the photo I was using. Right. Well, I just had them side by side. But, Does that yeah. look real? Is that like a real thing? I mean, in that picture, it looks like it could be. Right. So I don't know. But... Interesting. Interesting. I mean, look at Somerset. He looks like a normal, you know, uh, wiretapper. Yeah, typical snitch. Typical typical rat. He looks right? like a fed. Well, I think he wanted to be a fed because they were later accusing him that he wanted to be a assassination buff. Years later, he thought he would get involved in, in assassination research. But um, let me just look here for a second if I have any photos of, of him. Yeah, the only... Uh photo that i found on him was the, the one that had photo right yeah interesting yeah i'd like to know where quitman uh georgia is if there's any people out there who know about quitman i mean is that like a wealthy town or you know what i mean or is it a suburb um yeah, you can pick up a little bit on 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 miltier in anthony summer's book conspiracy um I mean, he's scattered around different books. I mean, it's not, he's not that obscure, but there's not much on him. And then Lopez, uh, unless you get into Ultimate Sacrifice, which is really a mob killed Kennedy book, uh, but there is House Assassination Committee stuff on Lopez that I find to be fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Yeah, but that's the problem with uh, a lot of these obscure characters right that you have to pick out of every other book like three really paragraphs do. here three paragraphs yeah. there, yeah, yeah, two yeah. there and yeah like ultimate sacrifice it's just like trafficante may have met with him and you go you have any proof of that and they go no you know i mean like there's no proof of trafficante and and they're just a mob did it uh a duo of waldron and and tom hartman who are uh, Tom Hartman, clearly deep state. He was Air America. Remember Tom Hartman? I don't know if you remember that guy. He was on Air America. He was with, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Al. Uh, Door. From, Al from Minnesota. The um, Oh, I was thinking Al Gore was on Air America. No, 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 no. He, he was, but so was. Um, um, oh, Al Franken. Al Franken was on there. Big Ed was on there. Um, remember that whole Air America race? I, I think maybe even Jimmy Dore might have been on there, or the Young Turks or something. At, at one I time. want to say Air America, I think it was that the radio became, with the leftist radio station, Eric. You no, know, I know, but I think it became Al Jazeera. For some reason, I thought that they got bought out and then became something else. I, I could be I wrong, think the Young Turks were on Air America. Yeah, Chank was. I think yes. Chank was, and yes. he was on MSNBC. Yes, yes. yes. Yes, but so was Tom Hartman is the point I was trying to make. So right. I take it with a grain of salt that Hartman uh, is a true Kennedy. That's funny. Tom Hartman. Tom, that's funny. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's see what the people say, Hunley. Has anybody got any? Yeah, we got some super um, stickers and chats. And All right. Uh, let's see uh, you spoiled it for Pasha because what? he did the Yiddish word of the day and he couldn't ask about it. So he doesn't know what to ask. Well, you got to get here at the beginning, Pacha. He was out mowing his Yiddish lawn. Apparently. You know? Apparently. Yeah. 
uh got some new members here look at this craig became a new member thomas became a new member wow tim became a new member wow i see a lot of uh darren became free. a new member <laughs> the youtube thanks thing it seems to be working a lot eric uh yeah everybody's being very generous and right. uh by the way this is streaming right now on locals really successfully again mm. and rumble wow. um and the locals we actually got some uh some tips on locals too really? um serena or Serenoa repens um sent a tip b isaac sent a 20 dollar tip wow. runt 167 sent a 10 dollar tip natural free man sent a tip auto sent a tip for my acting lessons thanks buddy oh that's a cheap shot and braxel sent a tip uh, we, didn't, yeah. we didn't do southern accents so that really spared the audience uh pain why would i do that to them i know that it's, a, it's a kindness we have 341 watching on rumble right um the locals there's uh 48 some odd people watching there maybe that'll pick up and then uh 2000 people here on youtube wow really really amazing uh, wow yeah some believe. of these books i have to buy with the book fund money even though i have to cherry pick the index and i'm not a fan of these books i still have to buy these giant tomes like hunley and i have to get just to cross reference a lot of this crap so i appreciate uh, the donations I've been getting on PayPal for the book fund. Thanks very much. Thank you. I, I look forward to somebody somehow down the road, even if they go to like one of these old collections, like we came across a person who I think had thousands of books who has to give them up because of his advanced age and some issues. Right. right. It would be so amazing if like a, a bunch of students or somebody got it and scanned every book. Oh, dear OCR'd God. It, That's my wet dream. Through. That's my wet dream. Are you kidding? It would it would help, and especially with like AI now. Then yeah. you could really get some interesting things, like uh, dude, I like to scan the National Lampoon editions, and nobody's even done or my MTV magazine. Oh, and National Lampoons are all um, they're well, on locals. So you could check I need them my out. My MTV one scan, that's for sure. The eighteen issues that I made for MTV, those have yeah. been scanned. I'd like to have somebody scan those someday. Yeah, um, I'm sure. I'm sure it can happen. Beverly um, Fitch. <laughs> My dad, My dad passed away in 95. Watching your channel makes me miss him so much. The topics you cover up his alley. Oh, okay. That's great. Thanks, Beverly. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's promising. Uh, Robot Rebellion. Do you think Oswald had any sense he was a patsy beforehand or just once it all went down and he was in Cubs? I, I think later, yeah, I think he did because uh, not beforehand, because he was obviously going to Hosty, the FBI agent, writing him notes and delivering notes to Hosty uh, the week before. I mean, I don't think a Patsy would be writing notes to the FBI and delivering it to him. Yeah, good point. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Uh, Darren Conrad. Thanks, guys. Love your channel. Retired New York, uh, sorry, North Carolina State Trooper, 34 years. Oh, thank you for your service. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Wow. And Pasha said no. There's oh, no mowing in. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. You know, you get crazy here because it's 75 degrees. I'm in Hollywood. So you forget that the rest of the country has winter. And actual weather. Michael. Actual weather, yeah. Great show, guys. I'm a fellow book chaser. Never look at what you spent. Just swipe and walk away. Yeah. Good I, advice. I, I, I do do that. I do do that. Yeah. I mean, my big find was um, from a show we just did. Oh yeah, that was a. Is that a soft cover version? Nope. Oh, it's hardcover, right? Okay, yeah, that's a great find. That's Original a... hardcover, and more importantly, I'm really proud of this. Yeah, he's got a, D, a CD in there. That's great. DVD that is intact. Well, it's a CD. It's not. A oh, DVD. CD. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. That would be a piece of uh, news if you had a DVD in there. No, it depends on when the book came out. I don't know. Now, now we're gonna go. We're gonna go to at some point to Las Vegas, I presume. We are going to Las Vegas. Thank you, Pasha. Um, the stories make them plots with joy. <laughs> yes. Um, the only thing I know for certain is we are going to Las Vegas. I have booked my flights and I booked my hotel, so I'm in town and. I think that the uh, I think the venue is has been picked. I I'm gonna leave it to Barnes to announce so. Right, right. Leave it to him. Yeah. Because I, I and I am watching like crazy. I check multiple times a day. 
Has he posted? Has he posted? Has he posted? Oh, because, I see. I see. Because right. I will put it out on locals immediately right. when we win. And I encourage everybody, again, please follow us on locals, on structured.locals.com. It is free to be a member. You don't have to pay. We'd love it if you support us there. And there's more content if you do pay. But there's a lot. And like when I post about the venue for Vegas, it's for anybody. Anybody can right, read that. Right, right. And others post all the time. I'd say what... How much would you say? 80, 90% of the content is free. Everybody can look yeah, at it. I don't know. It seems like it's all free except the documents. Okay. That uh, yeah. Put it's behind the paywall, um, you know, secret documents that we can't disclose. Okay. This is a good yeah. question. Uh, another awesome show. What assassination characters can we look forward to hearing more about? Oswald Bannister, who else might be in the future? Oh, there's a lot of them. I mean, you know, we're going to, Eric's putting together uh, Kennedy trading cards. So we may, um, have a card for each player, you know. Ultimately, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, we've got people. We've got more generals coming up. Lemay's got to come yeah, up. Yeah, no, the there's, line. Plenty of, oh. there's plenty of guys coming before we get to Oswald. So uh, hang in there. There's going to be a bumpy ride <laughs> till we get to November 22nd of 2023, which will be a big anniversary coming up. Huge anniversary, the 60th anniversary. It's going to be gigantic. Um, yeah. So we hopefully will have Oswald around that time, Eric. Right? Or I. I, I'm trying to set expectations better because I don't think Oswald will be done by then. Yeah. I'm wondering if we'll be starting him right. at that point. Right. Right. In a weird way, on the assassination um, commemoration date, starting his story about lined up when he died, in a way. Okay. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. I could, I could, and it'll be multi part, obviously. Yeah, uh, three or four, start, I'm sure. Yeah. We're going to start with his youth in New Orleans. Go to Atsugi, Japan, his marine training at El Toro. Uh, it's going to be a complete Oswald. That's going to be a five parter, I presume. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be huge. Yeah, it's going to be, it's sure. going to take a couple of weeks just to do Oswald if you people are still interested at that point. <laughs> Imagine the people watch every single episode and they go, ah, who cares about Oswald? <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then after Oswald, um, you know, we're not going to roll. We'll go back in LBJ and RFK. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I mean there's more are, coming. We got they, Vietnam. They're not, not completely, uh, you know, JFK assassination characters. They have their own right. history. You know, we're going to do John Connolly, and Connolly's involved in a lot of things. He switches parties, becomes a Republican, becomes Secretary of the Treasury under Nixon. Um, may or may not have been involved in the assassination. We're going to find out. Uh, Connolly's an interesting character. I like doing stuff on him. Um, his daughter blew her head off uh, one afternoon for reasons that we don't know. Lovely. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, yeah it may be more. It may be more to that. Is why I mention it. It may be more to that story. Well, I, I'm guessing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting story. But speaking of Patsy, if you oh, here's a like Patsy. Merch, here's a Patsy. This is the ultimate Patsy Oswald, mm -hmm. Mark's favorite dog. Yeah, I'm starting to starting to grow on me. You know. <laughs> Start, yeah, I don't know. Man, I, I like him better than I did at the beginning of this of the year, that's for sure. Last He's year. a proper mutt. Yeah. <laughs> much, much better than the pedestrian uh grow bear. Yeah, that's a traditional bear. I I, I don't know. I never had a, a I had a giraffe named Spotty as a kid. I had a like a styro a foam, a soft foam. A giraffe named Spotty that my parents couldn't get out of my my hands as a as a baby, so I never had a bear. So I think having a bear um, is a big deal to me. All right, uh, Darren's got a question. We actually have talked about the uh, the wrap package, I believe, in the Buell Wesley Frazier episode. But even if Lee Harvey Oswald never fired a shot, do you think he still brought a rifle there in reference to the wrap package? She said was curtain rods. No, uh, I don't know. I think the 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 Frazier's mother and Doherty, the foreman at the uh, Texas School Book Depository, when he got on the other end, both said his hands were empty. And, right. So uh, check out the Buell Wesley Frazier and Frazier, probably Ruth Payne. Uh, I, mean, I think both, we talked at the beginning and the end of the the commute. Uh, the mother and the foreman at the loading dock said his hands were empty. I'm going to go with that, and those were FBI um, statements. So you know, unless they perjure themselves. For reasons that I don't understand, I believe that Frazier and his sister, uh, Lenny Mae Randall, perjured themselves and said that there were curtain rods uh, under pressure from Dallas police. Could be. Yeah. Again, we got uh, 
I think we talked about it also in Ruth Payne. We definitely talked about it in Buell Wesley Frazier's episode and probably in Ruth, Ruth Payne too. So you know, please mm-hmm. check it out in the catalog. Mm-hmm. And the we have a whole JFK playlist actually right on the uh, front page. Mm-hmm. And we could talk about more because there's a lot of episodes. So you can go in there and I guarantee you it's hours and hours of. Yeah, everyone's looking at that those LBJ episodes for reasons I don't understand why that has become such a um, hot item all of a sudden. Well, the ladies of LBJ especially. Well, the, everyone loves the ladies, but uh, why all of a sudden after a year? I don't know. It's just uh, some algorithm crazy feed. Um, I'll take it. I'm take it. glad that people are getting a chance to see them, and I'm thrilled that the word's getting out. Mm-hmm. Um. Some people are not very happy since I've been doing shorts on them. <laughs> Is that true? Or oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the short doesn't explain everything, so I think they're embittered. They think that's the whole episode. Or something. Well, it, it's the one talking about his drinking at night oh, and, yeah. and yelling yeah. the N word and everything. Uh, yeah, I just don't believe it. Well, knock yourselves out. It's in numerous memoirs. Oh yeah, I mean, I've got people who's like, I've read. It. Uh, it, it, it's funny. It's like. And I'm just thinking, you haven't read the Carol books. You haven't I, read I, I, the, the Richard Goodwin's memoir. You haven't read Bill Moyer's memoir. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of documentation about the drinking of LBJ and his racial antics. Oh, you and know? that's the other thing. They're like, yeah, he doesn't drink that much. He would, and he, or he would, <laughs> Who are you? He would drink Who are you? this or he would drink that. No, it's it's funny. But. Dude, he would take cases and cases of Cardi Sark with him on Air Force Two to go overseas. No normal person does that. <laughs> Cases of it. <laughs> anyway. I don't know. Well, you're not going to win. Uh, Craig wants to know what book you want the most. What's your white whale? Um, I'd have to look that up. There's a number of white whales. It's not one white whale. All right. So, yeah, it does vary. But, all right. Well, we, we covered. So who's this here? We got another guy coming in. Speaking of daughters, you got... Oh. Caroline Kennedy is current. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah we I think she was Japan before that, right? Or and now Australia, or vice versa. Uh, I, one or the other. I think it, it, maybe it flipped over here, but yeah, I hmm. didn't know that. Didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. All right, I learned something new every day. Mm-hmm. So cool. next up, we have Freeform Friday. I have no idea who's showing up for that. I mean, it's been like uh, <laughs> crazy <laughs> the past couple of weeks. I mean, it's just crazy, man. Crazy. Yeah, Barnes. Barnes has shown up um, every a week in a row, right? Or yeah, and then two we had or three for a few minutes. Yep. Yeah, not a whole show, but enough uh, Viva until he can't take it anymore, and he's got to flee because of his wife or whatever personal issues he's got going on. But in Vegas, we'll all be trapped together. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. What What happens in Vegas is going to stay in Vegas, I guess. I when is that, March 13th or something, Eric? Or? Uh, Vegas is March 12th. March 12th, okay. And yes, that's the actual event. All right, uh, well, hopefully I'll see you people there. Hopefully, but yeah. in the meantime, we hope to see everybody on Locals. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mark will always happily take PayPal for the book fund. And you can follow me at Lord Buckley, it says over there on Twitter, uh, for some other hijinks. Absolutely. He may or may not block you, depending. <laughs> depending on my mood. I think I may have a mood disorder. So I have a Twitter I, mood disorder. I, I think it's like a spasm. I have I a like, spasm of blocking just, people. Yeah. yeah. All right, my I, friends. We'll see you Friday. See you then. All right.